Good morning, everybody. We'll be starting the webcast in about five minutes. Morning, everybody who's joined. We'll be starting the webcast in about two minutes. Okay, it's uh, 10 o'clock. Um, good morning, everybody, and welcome um, to this webinar. Before I start, can um, anybody or somebody just indicate in the Q&A that you can hear me okay? Just write yo, ya, yay, whatever you need to write, just in the Q&A box, and then I know that my voice is being broadcast okay. 
I know internally it's being heard. Anybody? Be brave, somebody. I will continue regardless in the hope that you can all hear me. Okay, let's carry on regardless. Um, this is being recorded, so it will be uh, able to be viewed later on. Uh, thank you all for joining us on this um, former webinar on planning and designing with former. We'll just start with some introductions. And for those that don't know who Greatec are, we're one of the largest Autodesk partners across Europe and North America. And we, we write software for, for business efficiency and design quality. You've, you've probably seen our power packs, which sit in Revit, Advanced Steel, Inventor, Vault, also Plant 3D. And we also have our own suite of software, Advanced Design Software, which helps structural engineers be more sustainable. Uh, and our advanced workshop, it's an industry 4.0 control and automation system. Now, if you want to be a BIM expert, you've come to the right place. We have over 270,000 users in construction and manufacturing successfully using our software around the world. Our offices, they span uh, 14 countries. And our goal is to make the, the industries we work in more sustainable as we work to decarbonize by 2050. I think I've flown way ahead of the video there, so we'll let the video just finish. Oh, I did, didn't I? I should have, I should have talked slower, shouldn't I? And here we are with the Paris Agreement. My name is Ian Robinson, and I'm the infrastructure consultant here at Grey Tech. And I'm responsible for training and implementing and supporting the Autodesk infrastructure solutions. And I've been doing this for around 20 years, working in the, the GIS and construction software industry. So anybody who's working in the infrastructure, we've probably already met. Joining me today um, is Rob Merriman. Um, and I don't know, Rob, if you're able to introduce yourself. Oh, I think, oh, there we go. Oh, you've put it on clicks. Um, so uh, I'm guessing that's a no, Rob. Uh, um, so Rob is our AEC technical lead. Um, and you can see from there, he's got 15 years experience, eight years working with... I can, I can, un I can, un oh, I can unmute myself. Can everyone hear Go me through, okay? Rob. Or Ian, can Introduce you hear me? Yourself. We can hear you fine. Oh. Uh -huh. Oh, and Andrew, thank you for telling us. Robbie, you're not introducing yourself. You seem to have gone. No, nope, we'll move on. There, there is a slight delay. So um, if you just give me a second, Ian. So yeah, I am the technical lead for Grey Tech in the UK. Okay, right. Sorry, a bit of technical problem there um, because there's a delay. Um, he's not that far from me, but clearly there's a. Uh, it, it's obviously going via space, I think, to get here, isn't it? So uh, uh, we'll carry on. But you can see there, that's Rob. Also with us today is um, Autodesk. Um, so we have uh, um, Anouk from Autodesk, um, and I'll let Anouk introduce herself, and I'll be quiet this time because there's clearly going to be a delay. So a new you go. I don't know if we have the delay as well. Uh, let's see. My name is Anouk. I work for Autodesk. I'm a sales development specialist for uh, Forma, introducing uh, customers to Forma within Benelux, UK, and Ireland. Um, I'm based in the Netherlands, as you might uh, notice. Um, so today I will tell you more on Forma, the vision of Forma, and the first offering 
as you can use Forma right now. And I have my colleague Evan um, here as a more technical uh, sales development specialist, also able to answer your questions if you put them in the Q&A. Excellent, thank you. Okay, um, uh, um, thanks for that. Let's just uh, carry on. So just go through the plan today and then we'll hand over to Anouk who will give you that, uh, deliver the, um, uh, the vision um, uh, and what form it is so you can all get to see what that is. So that's going to be the plan. You'll get an introduction to Forma um, by Anouk, and then we'll give a quick demonstration, just a live demonstration so you can see what it looks like, what's and all. I've no doubt something will go wrong, um, which is always how I like to work, because I think when things go wrong, you know that it's real and that's what you're going to receive. Uh, well, let's hope nothing goes wrong, but you never know. Um, uh, then what we'll do is we'll just discuss at the end how Grey Tech can help you get started, and we'll also have some um, um, questions as well. You can uh, an an answer any questions that you need. So I'll hand over now to uh, Anouk with the introduction to Forma. So Anouk, if I stop sharing my screen, you should be able to start sharing yours. Okay. Welcome to Autodesk Forma, the cloud-based planning and design software that helps architects and planners answer the big questions. How do we make the cities of tomorrow? Make sustainable neighborhoods? Make deadlines on time and on budget? Make sure increasingly complex projects make it over the line? How do we make sure architects keep making their mark? Forma puts data-driven insights at your fingertips, helping you make fast, smart decisions while designing. Because when you make use of better inputs, it makes for better outcomes. So when you ask, how can we maximize the sunlight? Forma makes it possible to shed light on your project from every angle. How loud is the noise from traffic and rail? Listen to what the data is telling you. Can fresh air reach every corner of every space? With the right data, making quick changes is a breeze. How do you explore more options for every site? Make and make over in real time, and then make spaces that work for everyone. Need to collaborate and share with multiple parties? Cloud-based projects invite input from all sides, making collaboration a walk in the park. Want to raise the bar on sustainability? It's easy being greener when you can make changes in an instant. Forma is ready to empower and accelerate your processes so you can start making projects digitally from day one. Make, test, and streamline your planning and designs. Autodesk Forma. Make tomorrow's cities. Make and make. Great, starting with a nice uh, marketing video of Forma. Oh, no, not again. Welcome to Autodesk sorry. Forma. Okay, sorry. Um, so today we are going to introduce you to Forma, um, the vision we have of Forma and the first offering that Forma contains. And again, if you have questions, raise them in the, in the Q&A. Um, starting with the safe harbor statement, basically telling you that um, you should not buy anything up on the things that we're telling you today. It's, um, uh, yeah, something, uh, of course, we, we have to do. Uh, the agenda for today, uh, I'll start with the industry trends. Um, I will introduce you with the Forma Vision, the first offering, and then hand over back to Greatech for the demo. Um, so as you all know, our industry is continuously changing and it's doing that faster than ever before. And this asks for new ways of working. The demand we see for projects is very high. And at the same time, projects are increasing in scope and complexity. And also the availability of cloud computing has accelerated digitalization, which has led to an increased change in AI technology. And of course, 
the reality of remote work means collaborating and data sharing is more important than ever before. The current workflows we see are very fragmented. Uh, you have to do with huge numbers of file formats, poor interoperability, siloed data, and while modeling capabilities have expanded, existing processes are still highly manual. And we hear that designers struggle to use tools that generate a high level of details, uh, since this is leading to detail, um, uh, to desktop files, installed software. This doesn't really match with today's hybrid and collaborative work environment. So we see that productivity suffers while we should be providing more efficiency. And with this, uh, yeah, we, we answer this with, with Forma. Um, our view is the best place to begin to improve these fragmented processes is in the beginning of a project, so in that planning early stage. Um, with Forma, you are able to influence your design in the early stage, when the design is most fluid and choices have to be made quickly. And the decisions you made in this um, early stage have lasting consequences all the way through the operational phase of a building. And this is why it's so important to make the best decisions based upon existing data and AI. We want to increase efficiency, stimulate collaboration and free up time. Um, so the opportunity uh, to create better design workflows for planning an early stage that can support designers' uh, creativity and efficiency during the phase when design choices are most fluid and flexible. So Forma is our response to the industry challenges of increased project size and complexity, fragmented collaboration, current limitations in automation and decision support. Um, Forma will really reimagine BIM. So let's start with our long-term vision of Forma. Uh, while this vision will, be, will take time to become reality, our intent of Forma is to eventually expand across the whole AECO industry. This means that our long-term objective is to develop Forma as the industry cloud for our industry, to unify BIM workflows across the teams that design, build, and operate the built environment, and enable data to flow seamlessly through the whole workflow. Uh, so Forma is really the future of our work. And our journey to realize Forma starts in the planning early stage design for your projects. Um, and over time, we'll add more capabilities to ultimately deliver the unified AECO cloud. So what's in our plan with Forma over time? Um, we are starting with data, building the critical data infrastructure, like the data backbone. And then it's uh, about building new Forma capabilities to unlock value from that data. And with Forma, we start at the beginning of a project in the planning um, uh, stage. And over time, we'll expand to more detailed design construction and operations. And as we are expanding, sustainability and driving an open ecosystem will be at the center of our approach. So as we go along, we'll connect our existing product capabilities to the data backbone to enable hybrid workflows across Forma, other Autodesk offerings, and third-party applications. So what does it mean for now? How do we present Autodesk Forma today? With Forma, you are able to onboard in just hours with access to advanced capabilities and insights. With our advanced automations, Forma will help you work more efficient, uh, takes out manual repetitive tasks, and you can evaluate proposals with a huge set of factors like sun, wind, noise, views. And due to the fact that we are cloud-based, it gives you a lot of advantages when it comes to file storage, uh, you can access Forma via your browser. You can work fluidly between Forma and other software, like, for example, Revit. And with our open infrastructure, we enable you to add in external extensions. So uh, what's the value that Forma brings at this moment, starting with contextual data? Um, with Forma, you are able to start a new BIM projects in just a few clicks. Forma will import available data from different data sets, or you can import them manually. And once you've set up your project, there will be no limits to your creativity. 
Um, we have advanced modeling tools like Formit IP, so you will be able to create complex 3D designs in just minutes. You are also able to import designs if you have them already to use them um, for, for uh, running the analysis, if you like. And with our automations, we help you be more efficient. Through simple parametric tools, um, we help you automate repetitive tasks and help you free up time. And with machine learning based analysis, you are no longer dependent on the support of a technical specialist. You don't have to wait weeks for a report from someone. You will be in the driver's seat uh, and getting real time analysis as you are designing. And we will show that more in the in the demo later on. And uh, the last point is our interoperability. Um, so when you're ready to move into a more detailed design, uh, the format Revit Evin ensures you a fluid uh, transition. You can instantly continue your work without needing to remodel um, and all without exchanging files. And this works both ways. So you can also uh, send your Revit model back to Forma to run your analysis on it, for example. Um, so I will sh stop sharing and give the word back to you guys. Um, Yes. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, that was really useful. Um, let me just share my screen again. I think uh, for me, uh, form is potentially the most exciting thing that's happened in the last 20 years in our industry in terms of software. I mean, obviously my job is software. Um, and I, I remember looking at Keyhole maybe 20 years ago when Google bought it and thinking that here we have potentially a platform that we can do a lot on. And Google kind of went down that road with SketchUp and things like that, um, and then just departed from it. And it's been in my head ever since. And I think this is potentially the start of that again. Um, anybody um, who is um, working with InfoWorks, for example, there's a bit of crossover there. Um, you can see where this platform's going. And the fact that Autodesk are leaving it open, I think, is is the most exciting aspect of it. So for you guys to get here and be kind of first in the queue uh, to look at this product, um, I think that's important. And even if you just take away from this one task that you think, oh, that's good. Um, you know, if you've got the AC collection, you've already got the tools to do this. And that one task might be all you need to get yourself started with it. So your takeaway from, from today is, yeah, that might be a platform that I'm going to use on a regular basis and uh, a daily or on every project. Um, but even if it's, your takeaway is just, actually, this is really good just for getting um, topo surfaces um, from the Environment Agency, LIDAR, which is a very complex, large data set, into Revit. You know, it could be as simple as that. So take away from it what you want, and let's just go and just have a look at the the actual um, uh, product itself. Um, so now you know what Forma can can do for you. We'll we'll we'll, we'll have a look at it um, uh, in action. Uh, and to give you an idea of where we're going with this presentation, I think it's always a good idea that you see um, the end result first, um, where where we're going to end up, um, and then you you can kind of um, you're not just parrot fashing watching me click buttons, etc. So what we want to do is we want to create a real world model of a site that we're going to develop. Okay. And it's an early stage project. This is right at the beginning. And it'd be a really good idea to get some real world context of our project. And then we can analyze it. We can, we can do with seeing things like how light would be changed on our site, not just on our building that we're going to place in there, but on the surrounding buildings as well. And on the ground, of course, we can also have a look at the local weather, how that will affect your site. Um, if anybody is from the Leeds area and has walked down Bridgewater Place in Leeds, you'll understand how important that is. Basically, what was Yorkshire's tallest building was there. You walk around the corner and you literally got blown into the street. So being able to analyse that very early on, you're not going to make these poor decisions um, at, that, uh, at that early stage. Um, you'll see how wind is going to affect your model. We can also look at things like noise levels from the roads. We can see how that's going to uh, affect be affecting our site, etc. Now, all these images are direct outputs from Forma. You know, I haven't fudged anything together. I've just said output this image. 
uh, informal. And you can output really high resolution images like you can in, in Infoworks. Um, so essentially you could have one snapshot of your site and create lots of images from that, that single snapshot, which is really useful. So how do we start with Forma? Um, well, if you have the AC collection, then you have Forma, um, or you can come to Greytech or Autodesk and uh, get it separately. And you can create yourself a desktop icon. There's mine there, Forma. You can create your own desktop icon if you want, or you can just have it in your browser and just have it as a, a bookmark in your browser, um, which is nice and easy. Um, but it's actually in your Autodesk account. Um, so if you just go to your accounts, products and services, and you will be able to see in there, there will be Forma, and you just access it, and it opens up in your browser. This is what it looks like um, when you're there. Um, I'm going to run through this uh, briefly uh, when I jump to the product, um, but let's just have a look at how easy it is to set up a project. Um, in the top left there, you can see um, where there is a hub, so we create hubs and then you can invite people into that hub um, and you can choose which projects these people get access to. That's up there in the, uh, in the top left area. And then you can see simply create a new project. When you get to create a new project, you just need to say what country it's in. So in this case, um, it's in the United Kingdom and I've called this one Salford. And you'll see underneath there, it says uh, invite only projects. So if it's an invite-only project, it doesn't matter who's in the hub, um, only the people that you invite to the project will see it in the hub. If I uncheck that, everyone in the hub will see this project. So you've got proper control over who has access to your um, account. And you'll see in a minute, um, some people won't even have an Autodesk license, and that's fine. You know, We'll have a look at what happens if you haven't got a license. You want to share with somebody that you're working with who hasn't got an Autodesk license. Uh, so when you create a new project and tell it where it is, you'll get a map of where it is. And all you need to do is zoom in uh, to where you want. You'll see on the right hand side here, it says um, um, there's a little bit of information um, about the data and what have you, which I'll, I'll come to in a minute. So let's zoom into our Salford Keys project that we're going to work on. When you get down to four square kilometers, so that's its limitation at the moment, is four square kilometers, and you'll see a box appear, and then you can pan around and move it, and you can even turn on uh, aerial imagery, et cetera. Oh, I was gonna show you that. I, I think that might come up next. Um, that, that area that's highlighted now, it's telling us where it's getting the, the data from. And again, any of you that know me, I bang on about this website constantly. Everybody who comes on my training gets a PDF with all the links to all the websites for where this data comes from, because um, we use it a lot in civil engineering. So all your civil 3D users should be using that data. Um, Infoworks users should be using that data. Map 3D users will be using that data. And that's the best quality, most recent free data that you can get in the UK. Um, it's a ground for landform, if, you, if you're unfamiliar with that. So it gives us if you're a Revit user, you would call it a topo, which is technically incorrect, but we'll go with it because that's what it's being called uh, for your Revit users forever. Um, so, yeah, we'll get this ground data that we can work with. And we'll have a look at the other data sets that we can uh, get uh, as well. As I say, you can turn on the aerial imagery. Um, so this is the Bing map that you see in your AutoCAD. If you've got AutoCAD LT or any version of AutoCAD, um, then Bing maps, that's what you see in AutoCAD. Um, so it's going to match your AutoCAD product, uh, project perfectly. Um, and then when you're happy with that, you can just simply confirm my area, which is there. And then in here, it will show us what data is available. Um, and most of it is OpenStreetMap. So you've got OpenStreetMap, which will give us buildings, all the buildings from there. Now, some of the data in OpenStreetMap has height data in there. Um, there are webinars I've done showing you how to create buildings using Ordnance Survey Master Map with height data. And if you if you need to have the real height data from the Ordnance Survey, um, then you can get that. But a lot of the OpenStreetMap data is correct as well. Same with the streets. You get all the streets from OpenStreetMap as well. And then there's that LiDAR data, which has already been added. The little green tick tells me it's already been added. So I don't need to go and re-add that. Uh, sometimes maybe the data you're working in area, particularly if you're working in um, 
some of the uh, other countries uh, in the UK. So, for example, Northern Ireland doesn't have as comprehensive a data set. You'll just put a flat base on it. And if it doesn't matter, uh, you're working on a flat base, that's what the flat terrain's for. So it's, it, it, it's just an alternative. But if you've got the data, you might as well use it. This is what you'll see when you add it. And you can deselect uh, any of the buildings. Maybe you're going to do some um, uh, demolition and then rebuild. Um, we're not in this project. We've got a nice area in Salford Keys that we can we can uh, develop. Uh, and then just add it. Simple as that. You can also add your own data in here, so your own models. Now, at the moment, this is via OBJ or IFC for 3D models. That will expand over time. Um, uh, but that's nice and easy, isn't it? So if you've got your own Revit model, just output it as an IFC file, and then you can just drag and drop it straight into here, and your Revit model will be in there. I've got a Revit model that we will be placing in our model here as well. Uh, you can add 2D vector data information. So maybe you've received a site layout from the architect and you want to overlay that, then you can put that in there. Similarly with raster images, um, at the moment, for example, if you want to put flood data in, that's nice and easy. You can put the flood data into AutoCAD Map 3D and output it as an image and then just overlay the image on here. So stuff like that can be can be added in there. Um, if any of you are uh, Space Maker users, um, uh, which is one of the products that Form is kind of eventually going to replace, um, uh, that does have a greater list of um, uh, options for importing things. Um, and as I say, that will all be integrated and it will increase uh, over time. Now that gives me, uh, brings me nicely to the SaaS model that we're talking about here, software as a surface or as a service or cloud models. And this is one of the biggest advantages of working in a cloud model. And it's been where we've all been looking towards for the last 20 years. Uh, and and we're, we're finally getting there, which is brilliant. Um, uh, but the, the advantage to you is no more waiting for IT to install software. No more having to get the most powerful computer that man can purchase um, uh, to be able to run your software. It's all done in the cloud, and it's all done using Autodesk's performance, power, space, everything. So it's uh, going to make it a lot cheaper for you guys in the long run. We're not there yet. This is the long-term vision. Don't forget what Anouk said. Um, but it will make it a lot more, uh, a lot cheaper, a lot easier. No more waiting for IT and all that business, which is great news. So when they add new features, you'll just see them. You don't have to do anything. They'll just appear uh, in there, OK? Uh, so there's a Revit model that I'm going to place in there. And again, it's just a drag and drop note. If it's georeferenced, it will uh, georeference it. That is optional. You can just manually place it, which is what I'm going to do here. It understands the unit. You can rotate it and change its orientation. But again, you can do that when, uh, when you're in there. You just hit Save and Close. And this is what your um, project will look like. So let's go and have a look at that project. Oh, I don't know if I've got it all ready. So if I just click on new project. Oh, I should have gone back to here. Hang on. So this is what um, Formal looks like. I'm just running this in Microsoft Edge uh, at the moment. Uh, I have just noticed. Uh, can any of the other presenters just confirm that they can see my screen? Because on my preview, it's not showing. We can see you, but not your screen anymore. But you did see up to that last slide. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'll tell you what I'll do. I will stop sharing and I'll start sharing again. So give me a second. There yes. it is. You can yeah, all see yeah, that yeah. now. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, Anouk. That's brilliant. Okay. So this is uh, uh, former that um, uh, is just running in Microsoft Edge, but you know if you've got Google Chrome, um, that should be fine as well, or you can uh, uh, Firefox. Again, um, Anouk, maybe you can confirm if Firefox is supported. I think it is. Um, I don't know if I've tried it yet. Uh, okay, let's get this up here. Okay, so um, let's just, first of all, have a look at the users and how, how you manage the users. Um, I am aware of time. I'm going to have to go through this quite quickly. So um, uh, at the end, we'll talk about what options you have, where we can go a little bit deeper. But essentially, um, we have our hubs here, and I am logged in as a, let me get my uh, options up on my screen. Oh, where's it gone? 
Oh, there it is. I am logged in as an admin. Now, an admin person has full access. We can create, we can edit projects, and we can invite members uh, into our project in here. And if we have a look at my project folders here, you will see I have access to one, two, three, four, five projects. Okay. Now, there are different levels that you can uh, get access. You can get access as an admin or you can get access as a creator. Now, a creator can uh, create and edit projects, but they can't invite new users to it. Then you have viewers, and viewers uh, can only view it. So, for example, if I go to my uh, .com site here, so this is me logged in as a creator. Uh, and you can see, I can see members, but I can't manage the hubs or anything like that. And if I go to my projects here, I've been given access to just the two projects in here. If I go to the webinar one, you can see I've got this .com Salford project, but I haven't got access to the one that we're going to work on uh, uh, today. And then in the next one, I've logged in as a viewer only, so I can invite anybody. So this person here, IR, doesn't have any Autodesk account at all. Um, and you can see in here, he can go to projects, and these are just the projects that he's been invited to, and it's three different projects. It's even more than the, the other chat there. Um, and again, we can look at members uh, in here, um, but we can only see what the... Um, you can see there, there's my .com creator, my admin, and my viewer in there. And it's asking me, do you want to sign up, you know, to, to have an Autodesk account? Obviously, that would, would make the most sense. So my, my point here is you've got full control over who sees what and how much access they have, whether they can just view it, you don't need to pay any money or have an account, or whether they can create uh, projects as a creator, then you need an account, or an admin would obviously administer um, the hub uh, in itself. Now, on top of the ability to create, let me shut these down to save on my uh, computer memory, on top of the ability to add members to the hub and give them roles, when we create a new project, you can also decide if everybody in the hub sees that or only specific people see that. So you've got control over that as well. Now, uh, in the projects, uh, say there's a fourth, uh, in the project stage, there's a fourth um, uh, user type, which is called a collaborator. And that's when you invite somebody to a specific project. Uh, and you want them to be able to edit it, then you invite them as a collaborator. And they need they need an Autodesk account uh, as well. So let me go back to my project. Um, we can create nice little folders here and uh, on the webinar. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention um, in here, in the home one. Uh, down the right-hand side here, you've got former blog. I would highly recommend you subscribe to that so anything new that happens will appear in there and you'll be able to see it. There's a forum if you have any questions, and there's also a YouTube channel uh, as well. So as well as bookmarking our YouTube channel where you'll see new things, I would also bookmark that one as well, which would be quite good. So let's just go into the project and have a look at how it looks. So if I go into my webinar, uh, my Salford one, this is it loading here. Oh, I should be in a different one. Let me go to this one. So in the actual project itself, so we've got our data. So here it is, and we can uh, spin around. I just need to switch it to 3D, and we can zoom in and out. It's very reactive. Um, and these are the buildings that have come from OpenStreetMap, uh, and the ground has come from that LiDAR data from the uh, Environment Agency. Uh, and we can edit them, and uh, we can work on them. We can create proposals, so you can have multiple options, if you like, uh, on these proposals. Um, and when you create a proposal, you also have the ability to export it as well, which I'll, I'll, I'll cover later on. We can see at the moment we've got our layers down the left-hand side here. So we've got our terrain, which we can edit and turn on and off. And on our base, we've got our buildings and our roads that we can switch on and off. Uh, down the left-hand side here in the navigator area. So the top one goes back to that home. Uh, then you've got your navigator for your project. 
And the library is if you want to add more data. So maybe you didn't put the roads in, you decide to put the roads in, or you want to import a Revit model. You can go to the library. These are the things I've already imported. And if I want to order more data, maybe I didn't put the roads in, you just click order data. It takes you back to that screen you've already seen. And similarly, if I want to import, it takes you back to that scene. So you can just go and drag and drop your um, Revit files via IFC straight in there, and then you uh, have them available, which is what I've done previously. It just takes, you know, 30 seconds to a minute, and I didn't want you to have to wait for that, although I've just said that, which is probably how long it took if I'd have just imported it. Um, uh, on here, we also have the extensions area. Now, the extensions area, again, this is something that's open. You can create your own extensions. Um, I'm not an expert in that, so I'm not the right person to talk about that. Um, uh, but you can create your own extensions. Um, there is one in there at the moment, uh, which is called TestFit. What I would recommend you all do, though, is click on, add, when you've created your project, is add an extension, and you'll see the ones that are in here already. And again, this is not exclusive. It's going to grow and grow and grow, and people are going to add their own extensions in there as well. So this is where you would download the Revit add-in. So we have a, an add-in between Form and Revit, so we can... Um, uh, output things into Revit, and in Revit we can change things and bring them back into Former. Um, anybody who uses Rhino, we also have the ability to work with Rhino files as well, very similar uh, uh, import and out output. Uh, and again, for your Rhino, Rhino users, there's the Shape Driver, which is the Grasshopper script. If you don't know what that is, don't worry, I didn't either. It's like Dynamo. Um, again, anybody, feel free to correct me. Um, but it's like Dynamo. But this, this one's really good. This will create uh, car parking areas based on standards that you can decide, um, and it'll allow you to to work out how many car park spaces you're gonna you're gonna have. And it's all dynamic as you move things around, etc. So you can say I've already added it. Um, before it was added, you just click Add, and it just says, "Yep, I accept the terms and conditions. Jobs are good." And so now that's uh, uh, in there. These are the extensions on the unpublished. Um, that's uh, we haven't got any. We haven't created any extensions ourselves yet. I suspect this is something we'll be we'll be doing fairly soon, um, where you can just put in the ID and find your extension and add it on. Um, but we haven't as yet done that. Uh, down the bottom here, you've got your project members. So remember, I said you can invite people to the hub. We can also invite people to specific projects. So in this project, you can see I've added Rob as a collaborator. So Rob could go to this website, um, go to his former, his own former, um, and he'll see that project in there. Um, uh, and so will I and the admin, obviously. And then there's that, that Ian Robinson chap, whoever he is, uh, that we added as a viewer. And I can, of course, change all these things here, and I can revoke access. Um, that's because it's an invite-only project. If I uncheck that, then everybody in the hub can see that project and work. And then the bottom one here is a compare. We'll have a look at that at the end. So it allows us to just compare um, um, some analysis. So briefly, let's go back to the proposal. On the right-hand side, we've got our area metric here. Um, and then we have all these different analysis tools. So at the moment, we've got sun hours, potential daylight hours, wind, microclimate, uh, operational energy. Note that's in, um, uh, that's in beta noise and then any additional extensions because again it's an open platform so you can write your own um, extensions uh, as well uh, and then we've got some drawing tools here so we can start drawing things okay um, so first things first let's just have a look at um, our surface you will find when you work with particularly things like open source data sets um, that there'll be some anomalies and you can fix them anomalies. So for example, this building here, um, you can see immediately that the ground is actually coming through the top of that building. Um, and we can we can fix that in numerous ways. We can either lift the building up or we can uh, fix the ground data. Just quickly, I'll show you how you can quickly fix the ground data. If I just go edit the terrain, this button here will allow me, you can see that lump there. This button here will allow me to trace an existing object, which I think I have to tab. Yeah, and you can see it's just flattened that area there, 
okay? And we can set what the levels are and we can set the slopes, etc., which we'll have a look in a minute. But that's a quick way of fixing any anomalies uh, like that. You see, it just creates a, a terrain pad, and I'm happy. There's no save or anything. You just hit the back key, and that will fix that problem. And then the other alternative is we could just lift the building. There's a couple of other anomalies um, that you can work on here. I'm very conscious of time, so I will move on. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our building in this area here, and um, we'll do a little bit of analysis on it. I have pre-done some analysis if we do run out of time. Um, so first things first, um, I'm going to define the site limits. So if we have a look in this button here, we can do zones. So we can have multiple zones, and you can analyze different zones. Uh, we can do constraints, and we can do site limits. I'll do the site limits. So this is where it's going to run the analysis on the site and we'll just do this whole area here around here like so which is where our project is going to be double click and that's our site limit uh, you can see it lands in the layers and i can turn it on and off uh, and our building is going to go here so i want to flatten this land because the land itself is a bit wibbly wobbly as you'd expect because there's nothing there at the moment so uh, in there we could add a zone if we wanted to um, or we could add a surface, either or, it doesn't really matter. Um, again, somebody will hopefully tell me what the difference is. There must be a difference between them. So I'm just going to draw a surface here, which is the land I want to flatten. Like so. See how quick it is. I really, really like that. There it is. Okay, so we will just edit the terrain, and we'll trace that object and then we'll look at how we can put slopes on that object so there we are we'll pick that and there we are so it's now set a level and you can see there it's set the level and we can choose to have it straight or we can choose to have it let's say we do uh, one in three and it'll put a nice slope on there and you can adjust it beautifully like so um, and you can set your levels in there. Simple as that. So we've got a building platform, flat area that we can now place our, our building on. So let's have a look at our building. I'll turn the site limits back on again so we can see them. Now, the buildings that you've got here, these are all fully editable. Um, but you can just draw your own buildings in here. So, for example, I can just draw a basic building. So let's just pan that down, and let's say I'm going to put a building here. You can see it snaps. Can you see it's snapping to angles, etc. Uh, you can turn them on and off, um, and you can also tab between length and angles, just like you can in AutoCAD. So we'll finish that with double-click, and then we can just lift it up to whatever height we want. And again, you can just type in. If I want it to be 60 meters, it's 60 meters. So. Oh, I'm there, guys. I did that wrong, didn't I? Let's just do that again. There. Okay. Uh, it puts floors in as well, and we can choose the function of the building. So it could be residential, for example, or it could be commercial. You can create your own in here, and you can choose, um, you know, maybe there's a retail or something like that uh, that you can put in there, uh, etc. You can have your your own uh, sites. We also have uh, line buildings, which you can draw a lining to any part of our building, like so. Oh, I need to pan that around, don't I? Like so. Uh, and then we can adjust these. We can just say how many floors there are. So we go to five floors. Um, we can also design the um, uh, design things like uh, circulation, which will put corridors in here. Um, and if we click on that, we can choose where them corridors are on the inside or the outside, etc. And the width of the corridor, so if I want it three meters, etc. Um, and then you can also work with um, floor plans as well uh, in here. I'm going to look at, uh, I'm, I'm very conscious of time here, so I'm just going to um, 
uh, move on to some of the other tools uh, that are in here. Let me just get my notes back up. Yeah. Um, so let's delete that and delete that and have a look at our Revit one, because I think that's why most of you are, are here. So if I wanted to add a Revit model into here, I will go to my library. I've already imported it. There it is. And this is my hotel. And I just click on it. And then this is our Revit model, which I'm just going to place. We've got some foundations in there, so we will need to, to move it. We've got our edit tools here, so I can uh, rotate it, for example. Just spin it around. And then I can use the move tool. And I can move it to where I would like to place it. Um, and within the move tool, you can see you can also adjust its height, which is quite nice as well. You can just pick a, a point on it. And then if I tab the height, it's now going up or down. Okay, so we'll go down to here. And that's our, our Revit model in here. And we'll be running the analysis on that as well. What time is it? Oh, way. I need about two hours for this, guys. Um, other tools you've got, you can add tree lines in here. There's our trees, um, and we can uh, edit the size of the trees, etc., uh, in there as well. You can have them taller or, or, or more frequent, etc. Um, let's put a car park area in here as well. So if we go to our add-ons here, there's our car park area, and we're just going to draw our car park. in this area here. When you add your car park, particularly um, if you're working in the UK, you'll need to click on this button here, which allows you to set the sizes. So there's a default style size in there. So we want them 2.4, 4.5, is it? Anybody remind me? Uh, aisle widths, uh, six turn radiuses. And you can see it's dynamically updating as we uh, as we change uh, things in there. Uh, next thing we can also do is we can use these new AI tools. Now, AI is an important thing these days, isn't it? We're all talking AI, aren't we? Chat GDP and all that business. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new zone. So I'll just create a new zone in this area here. And we're going to get it to put the buildings in for us on that zone. So if I go this tool here you can see here we can say what the width is um etc how many stories they're going to be so let's go five stories um and basically we can pick our zone it'll automatically place the buildings in so we can now explore all of these kind of layouts that have been defined for us based on what layouts we would like it to analyze so we can say, well, we don't need that. We don't need uh, um, linear. We'll get rid of that one. We'll get rid of that one. And we can just kind of choose the general layout. And you can see it's constantly giving us these live feeds. So that might be a really nice way of being able to just quickly put something in for your project. This is something that has been happening. So I'm wondering if it's because I'm running so many different versions uh let me just get that back yeah we'll we'll try it as it is these are all editable by the way you can edit the floor plans you can even draw your own for those that have space maker you can see here i can create um uh 3d modeling where is it there is 3d sketch you can create your own buildings or your own objects whatever they happen to be I just want to quickly sketch something out just to give you a flavor of the tools. And then I want to run the analysis because that's the, the key, one of the key features uh, in here. So we've got our simple derivatives here. Um, if I just escape out of that and hover that, you'll see cubes, pyramids, roofs, cylinders, and domes. So if I just put a cube in here, maybe rotate it a little bit. 
and then pick a side and we can extrude faces like so. And lift it up like so, etc. Um, and you'll see that we've got lots of editing tools as well. So union, subtract, sweep, cover, loft. You know, so you can fill it, for example, if I just decide to fill it in the top of that building. I'm not going to go into the 3D modeling side of things. I've done loads of 3D models in here, and it works really nicely. And it's, it's you know, those that use Forma, um, not Forma, what's the other one? Formit um, and things like that. It's, it's that kind of tool that's been integrated in here uh, as well. well uh, we can also, on our building, if I... Um, exit the 3D modeling. There it is. Uh, we can, oh, I've drawn it on the car park because I'm an idiot. Um, uh, you can see that you can uh, get some metrics on here uh, and we can go back and edit it at any time uh, in there. But as I say, I, I don't want to go too deep into this because of time basically, but know that you've got all of the 3D sketching tools that, that you would expect. So let's just have a look at some of the uh, analysis that we can do mainly on my hotel uh, in this area here. So if we go to the sun analysis, um, we can view previous ones, we can choose our date and you can just simply run the analysis. So let's just run our sun analysis on there. If this takes too long, given the time I have previously done this, so we'll run, we'll go through the, the previous ones. I can't remember how long it takes. It all depends how quick you... No, it doesn't really depend on your internet, does it? Now, while it's running the analysis, you can carry on working. So I can carry on building and doing other stuff. I can even go, as I say, I'll go back to the history and look at the one I did yesterday. Oh, no, it's not got one. <gasps> Why have you not got one in there? I thought we did have one. Uh, but we can carry on. We can go to running analysis on our light, on our wind, uh, et cetera. Um, you can also do it on the uh, road noise. So if I wanted to know what the road noise was around here, um, then we can. So I'll tell you what I'll do while that's running in the background. Let me run back to this and hopefully you'll be able to see it can you see it can you see it no you can't so i will stop sharing that and start sharing the powerpoint when i first run through this i was thinking oh yeah we can do this in about 20 minutes and then i realized actually again those that know me i could talk for probably a day on this subject alone um, uh, um, and what have you. So this is the sort of analysis you're going to get. Um, so this was run last night on that model. So you, you, you it's exactly as it as it, as you would see it live. It just takes a couple of minutes to run that analysis. By the time I finish this bit, that analysis will have been completed. Um, and you can also look at. Um, um, you can use this little button up here, and it'll tell you how many hours sun. So you can see actually our balconies are not getting an awful lot of sun uh, in here. We can also then have a look at that with our daylight potential uh, as well. So we have our daylight potential in here. This uh, one is microclimate. So again, we can look at the kind of temperature locally within that area based on air temperature, time of day and time of year, etc. Now, all these things, again, my mind immediately goes straight to well, where's the data coming from? And they've given us that data source here. So you can read about the data source. You can understand the data source. Just click on that link. It'll take you straight to the uh, uh, the website and uh, tell you all about it. So again, you can be informed with your decision making and tell them real things. Uh, this one is the wind. So there's a few different wind analysis. So in here, we're looking at comfort. So the red zones are uncomfortable. You can see down here and the green zones are nice and comfortable uh, and then somewhere in the middle. Um, uh, you can also look at wind direction uh, in here. So on a southerly wind, when it's a high wind day, where is it going to be quite, where's the wind going to actually be concentrated to? So immediately I'm looking at this alleyway down here thinking, well, maybe we need to put some 
breaks in there, some wind breaks, etc. Before I even uh, do anything, uh, you can do that in 3D as well. So if you 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 can run a quick analysis, which the first one was, and then you can say run a detailed analysis, and the detailed analysis takes oh up to three hours. It, it can take some time. Basically, you run the detailed analysis and then just get on with other work. Even other work in Forma, it just runs in the background. Another advantage of working in a SAS model is that you've got all the computing power you'll ever need, and it just runs in the background while you carry on working. And the output is we get our wind. Um, and you can choose the height of these streams, and you can see how it affects your site in 3D live, which is, is very nice. <clears throat> this one is the analysis for sound. Um, so in order to get the sound, you put on the each road, you decide what the road speed is and what the average daily traffic is and what percentage is daytime traffic and percentage is nighttime and evening traffic. Um, and then just run the analysis and it will give you this 3D view of where it's going to be loud and where it's going to be quiet. And obviously the big red zone is on the road itself. So that's going to be the loudest area, as you'd expect. But of course, the lower end of these buildings... It's going to be louder than it is at the top of them buildings, which is what you'd expect to see as well. So, again, we can uh, look at that type of analysis as well. Let me just see where we're at. I'm going to uh, wrap it up because we've done an hour already. Um, we can take our model and we can output it straight to Revit. Again, this is in beta, but it's obviously a core function. I think it's absolutely vital to output this to Revit. I think outputting to Civil 3D would be useful as well, um, like we would do with uh, InfoWorks. Um, it's in beta, but there it is. It's just a simple click on the ellipses next to your project and output that to Revit. Um, and in Revit, looks like that. A coordinated model. And even if you just used it for the topo, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Um, but there is a live link as well. So any of these... Um, models that you've created using 3d model builder in Forma, you can edit in uh, revit and it will update in Forma. Uh, but it is geolocated um i can see it's using uh, wgs84 that's fine we're okay with that i'd like to see it on the british national grid but hey we'll go with it uh, so yeah fully geolocated those that use rhino you can design any old rubbish like i designed here the weirdest spikiest weirdest building ever um and there is the add-in if you uh install the add-in that i talked to you about at the beginning uh, you get this add-in on the right hand side you just put in the web address literally just copy the web address from your um, address bar in your browser um tell it which proposal you're going to work in um and you can have a continuous push you can it will continually every time you change something in in um um, in Rhino, it will update in um, Former as well, which is rather nice as well. Um, and you can also output OBJ files. So if I wanted to put some context in regarding um, into something like Navisworks, uh, Navisworks can read your OBJ files. So you can take your OBJ, you can take your Revit file, you can stick them all together with your civil models, and they all coordinate, which is um, rather nice as well. And it's 10.59. So I think um, what I will do is probably wrap it up at that point. Um, so uh, I've got Rob with me today and Anouk and uh, Evan as well. So by all means, you guys just pipe up uh, if required. Um, the uh, question really is, what can we do? How do we get started? Well, remember, if you've got the AEC collection, You've got the tool. Just open it up and give yourself half an hour just having a look, having a play, and seeing where that can fit within your design process. Where we can help, um, we can assess your requirements and complete. Uh, we can do a complete design review process. So we can come in and uh, interview you and your teams, and we can work out um, not just with Forma, with all of the software that both Greytech and Autodesk produce, and work out the most efficient way forward. Um, we can provide you with, obviously, the software all in one place. You're not having to go to multiple vendors. So the Greytech software, the Autodesk software, all in one place. Um, makes life a lot easier. 
Uh, we can train, we can do classroom training, online training, and we can do it on your site. The training course um, is um, pretty much complete already. So just ask if you would like some training on this. I think it's going to be initially one day, um, but uh, potentially going up to three days. Um, we'll, we'll see where that goes uh, on the training. Um, when I say three days, they don't have to be three days together. Um, we can split them days as well. Uh, we do ongoing support as well, so alongside Autodesk. So obviously Autodesk are going to need to support the SaaS side of things. We can't go onto their servers and, and help in that respect. So Autodesk have a superb support system in place. And of course, we can support you in terms of setting up, um, learning it, using it, etc. cetera. Um, we can also provide you with BIM management certification. So anybody who's working on the uh, uh, going down the BIM route, um, we can provide the certification for that. And we can do consultancy, uh, both on projects uh, and on process management. In fact, that's what I was doing just earlier this week. Um, uh, my job, obviously, multifaceted, so uh, uh, it varies. So I've not been looking at the Q&A. So um, if anybody has any questions, I'll have a quick look now. Hopefully, Rob, maybe you've been keeping an eye on it. No questions so far. Oh, good. Right. Okay. So that means one of two things. Everybody's yeah. left. No, nope, they've not left. Um, uh, or um, it was very, very clear. Just a very uh, clear demo. Thank you. I hope so. Well, we'll see. Um, I wish I had more time. I'm, again, I think I think one of the problems I have is I, I talk a lot. Maybe I, maybe I should talk less. Um, so, uh, yeah, if anybody has any questions, ask them. If you're too shy to ask questions right now, or uh, as it is, you'll probably go get a cup of tea and suddenly realise, oh, damn, what does it do? X, or can I do Y? Please, please just simply email me or, or contact Autodesk or Rob, or, or you can just go straight to our uh, web address there, greattech.com forward slash UK. And there's my email address, ian.robinson at greattech.com. Dot com. Let me just have one last check of the q and I think we'll wrap it up at that. Okay, everybody. Um, thank you very much, um, uh, especially uh, Autodesk. So um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Anouk and Evan. Thank you, Ian. I know I'm on a, I'm on a bit of a del. A big delay. Uh, Evan, you, I didn't need you, which is good. Um, I'm hoping, Evan, that um, you would have jumped in had I... Uh... Had I made a mistake? I wish, I think again, I wish I had more time. That's all. So um, anybody who's got any more questions and want more time where I can show them in a little bit more detail, just get in touch. And we'll wrap it up at that. Um, uh, so thank you very much indeed. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Cheers, Anu. Cheers.